Time now for the Educated Retirement Show with your host, Jay Kaplan. Jay discusses reverse mortgages and can answer your questions at 951-922-3532. Call lines are open at 951-922-3532. And now, here's Jay. And here is Jay, and Jay is very proud to be here and very happy to be here. I'm talking to as many people as I can today and uh if you're stuck on the freeway i do feel sorry for you but you know one thing at a time at least that means you're probably working unless you're headed out of town it is friday and uh i know the 15 and the 91 can be well the 91 is going to be nuts going either direction but so be it we put up with these things don't we so welcome back to the Educated Retirement Radio here on KMETAM. And uh, we're also here on FM. And uh, we are celebrating retirement. We're talking about retirement. We are considering what it takes to stay happily and successfully retired right from the beginning all the way through. So remember, top your tank off. Make sure you don't run out of money or anything else. And um, money's not the most important thing, but it sure keeps you going so you can find those other things. So we were, uh, before uh, Nassanelli came in, we were talking about uh, some nostalgic birthdays. So I'm going to try to run through it. We've got only one more left and his son. And that's Donald Sutherland, who was born July 17th, 1935. And luckily he is still with us. He is still talking about almond milk and smoothies on television. In fact, he even got me to go out and buy a couple of smoothies. But in any case, what a voice. He's got a great voice, and and that's that. So Donald is a Canadian actor whose film career spans more than 55 years, and it is said that he gives... Give service with a sneer. No one plays a villain quite like Donald Sutherland. I'm not sure if I agree with that, but I mean, so be it. He says, you have to remember that bad guys are people too. I seem to remember him more as a good guy than a bad guy, but so be it. Anyway, Donald McNichol. Sutherland was born in St. John, New Brunswick. His father worked in sales and ran a local gas, electricity, and bus company. Hmm. As a child, he had rheumatic fever, hepatitis. I did too. Hepatitis A, I suspect that he had A also, and polio, which I never had. And you know, there's a lot of people that don't want to take this uh, vaccine for uh, COVID-19. 2019. And I'm not going to get political here, but I'm going to ask those people, aren't they glad they got the polio vaccine? In any case, he obtained a first part-time job at the age of 14 as a news correspondent for a local radio station. We got some pictures from, and uh, a little relaxation here. And, yeah, he looks just like he looks. And there he is. I have a hat like that, but I haven't worn it in a long time. And, of course, I don't look like that. And I'm not in as many movies as he is. But that is a good picture. Another one yet, or should we? Yeah. God, he looks so much like his son, don't you think, here in that picture? Just amazing. Uh, how he looks so much like his son. Oh, there's the son. Yeah, let's do a side by side. There's his son. I'm going to say, I don't know, maybe around the same age. Uh, I don't know, but I think that's looking pretty good. Anyway, uh, he graduated uh, from high school. Attended the University of Toronto, became an engineer, left Canada for Britain, and studied at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art. So I guess engineering is part of music and dramatic art. He began to gain small roles in British film and TV. 
He was, fe- and this was kind of, I don't remember him. I wish, featured in horror films such as Castle of the Living Dead, Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, which I've seen, and Hammer films like Die, Die, My Darling. Uh, I'm sure we've talked about Hammer films in the past, and we will again. So Sutherland's big breakthrough, big breakthrough was The Dirty Dozen and left London for Hollywood. He found himself a leading man in the 70s, such psychological horror films as Don't Look Now. Uh, are you sure it's Don't Look Now or Don't Look Back? No, it's Don't Look, no, now. Don't look now. Don't Look Now is... One of my favorite horror films. It came out the same time, I believe, as The Exorcist. It gained, or was it Jaws? I don't remember. We have to look it up. But whatever it was, it didn't get a lot of notoriety. I think it is absolutely wonderful. And I really highly, highly recommend it. Do we have a copy of it? No. I know we have it. We got plenty. Anyway. Don't Look Now uh, with Julie Christie. Sutherland has starred in over 100 films, and many film critics have cited him as one of the best actors never to have received an Academy Award nomination. However, he did win the Academy Awards Honorary Oscar in 2018 for a lifetime of indelible characters rendered with unwavering truthfulness yeah he was good all right and uh he was nominated for eight golden globe awards and won two golden globe awards and one primetime emmy award so uh his voice is also heard on numerous television commercials uh, including simply orange i already mentioned that about that and the uh smoothies and the almond milk is going strong right now now, his son, actor Kiefer Sutherland, has appeared in 50 films. Can you believe that? He's halfway made up to the old man. And to name a few, and let's get a picture. We already showed a picture of him. I'll just do a, qu- a quick redo. Redo. Do, 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 do. Okay. And uh, Stand By Me, which he was a little ogre. The Lost Boys... Flatliners, Freeway. Now, I thought Freeway was really good. Here's Flatliners. Whoop. And uh, I had, did not see the newer version. Uh, they did a newer version of this and Jacob Ladder and things like that. I This one's pretty good. In any case, it's pretty weird, too. Uh, Freeway is... Uh, was my first real uh, introduction to Reese Witherspoon, and I thought they were both amazingly good. And talk about villains. This is where the son really was a great villain. And uh, we met uh, we met Reese at America Cinema Tech, I don't know, five years ago, maybe. For Vanity maybe. Fair, it was the film. Um, and uh, oh, yeah. the questions and the answers. So... Uh, it was uh, a couple of movies. I think the movie was uh, Election. Election is what it was. And uh, in any case, it don't matter. There it is. And uh, Dark City. Now, Dark City, speaking of films, I think are great. Dark City was one of the best, is one of the best science fiction films I have ever seen it goes into the 90s. I forgot what year it is. Uh, Roger Ebert named this the best film of the year that year. And, of course, nobody else ever heard of it. This is a must. Got to see this. It's it's crazy good. And uh, it's also with uh, Jennifer, uh, what's her name? And Oh, look what's in there. Oh. Boy. <laughs> Are we organized really well or what? It's a good thing I don't want to watch Dark City tonight, ain't it? But I know it's around here somewhere. But uh, uh, what's what's the other guy? The guy that played the detective? The guy that was in Body Heat? Oh, um, uh, William Hurt. William Hurt. Yeah, yeah, really, really 
really outstanding film. Okay, so here's a, lar- a short list of Donald's films. Dirty Dozen, 1967. Director Robert Aldrich, co-starring Lee Marvin and the sons of Lee Marvin. Charles Bronson, John Cassavetes, Robert Ryan. Uh, MASH, which was so exceptionally wonderful. I mean, MASH was so good that I refused to watch the television show because the television show, as I recall, gave no credit to the film, uh, which I thought was a masterpiece. Uh, Robert Altman, who I think himself a masterpiece. So it co-starred Sally Kellerman, Elliot Gould, Robert Duvall, and uh, won one Oscar for Best Writing and was nominated for four. He was in Clute, 1971, uh, directed by Alan J. Bakula, co-starred Jaden Fonda, Roy Schreider, and the film won one Best uh, best Oscar for actress Jane Fonda. Uh, Don't Look Now, which we already spoke about, and I don't have a copy. I've got a copy around here somewhere, but that was directed by Nicholas Rogue, who also did Walkabout, The Man Who Fell to Earth, did he do The Man Who Fell to Earth? Wow, great movie, too. And uh, here's Picnic and Hanging Rock. Uh, uh, this was Peter Weir, oh, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. I'm sorry. But Nicholas Rogue is a great director and done some really great work. And uh, cinematographer for Roger Corman's The Mask of the Red Death. Also, uh, Fahrenheit 451 co-starred Julie Christie and uh, Fellini's Casanova. Fellini, I mean, everything Fellini does is a masterpiece. You got to watch it. It's going to put you in a great mood, except maybe Satyricon and a couple of other. But even, even so, very thought provoking. And uh, I love them all. Uh, so what what do we got here? What do we? Oh, this is for anyway. Um won Best Fellini's uh, Casanova, won uh, Academy Award for Best Costume Design. And he was in the remake, the first of uh, three remakes, making four total that I can count because I still got enough fingers, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And uh, 1978, director Philip Kaufman, co-starred Brooke Adams, Jeff Goldblum, uh, can... Uh, Leonard Nimoy and uh, Veronica Cartwright. And, uh, sorry, it's as if I keep, I'm getting exercise today. I keep dropping things and falling over for them. This is the first one, my favorite. This is the first one. It's got a lot of extras on it. You know what I mean? Remember the Criterion one had those great uh, that great uh, audio commentary. But check out the extras on this. Maybe we want to watch it. Uh, if you haven't seen the first one, you should see the first one. And here is the book by Jack Finney. Now this actually came out as a serial in a magazine. I forgot the magazine. I used to know what it was, but there is the book. Uh, which I haven't read, but, you know, I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. But uh, that was written by uh, Siegel. I mean, directed, directed by, by yeah, Don Siegel. Don Siegel. So <laughs> Ordinary People, 1980, directed by Robert Redford, co-starring Mary Tyler Moore, Timothy Hutton, Judd Hirsch, won an Academy, won four Academy Awards and nominated for two more. And then JFK in 1991. And, uh, oh, it's a heavy. This is called a Masterpiece, Electrifying, a Knockout. Uh, And this is, uh, you know, Stone did this film. But, uh, wow, it's a long film. It's on two discs. And uh, I remember that uh, our man uh, Sutherland played the... uh, Oh, not not exactly the equivalent, of, or maybe the equivalent of Deep Throat in uh, the All the President's Men, because he didn't keep giving information to the newspaper. 
but he did in fact uh, put uh, Kevin Costner on the right track. So great movie. I haven't seen it in a while, but I saw it so many times. I guess I'm giving it a break. So it uh, Kevin Costner, Kevin Bacon, Tommy Lee Jones, Gary Oldman, Sissy Spacek, Jack Lemmon, just a few people. Joe Pesci, wow, what a great, what a great parole he did in that one. Uh, Sutherland played one of the most crucial scenes of the film as he steps out of the shadows to speak to attorney Jim Garrison and starts off with, just call me X, as he proceeds to fill him in on the truth behind the conspiracy that killed JFK. Uh, he proceeds to tell him, your only chance is to come up with a case. The scene was just 15 minutes, but was considered one of the best speeches in the film. JFK won two Academy Awards, nominated for six more, including Best Picture. Ad Astra, 2019, directed by James Gray, co-starred Brad Pitt, Tommy Lee Jones, and... Uh, we got all of his stuff to show, right? We've already done that. So we've got some honorable mentions before I get kicked off the air. And we've got that wonderful uh, guest uh, by the name of Jay Kaplan to speak to us about the greatest things in finance. And he'll be coming up very, very soon. So uh, honorable mention is to Barbara Stanwyck, who uh, came in July 16th. That's today. 1907, left 1990, and uh, actress in over 30 films, and won Academy Award act uh, actress for Sorry, Wrong Number. Now, here is probably, this could be her most famous role, or the most famous film that she was in, uh, film noir kind of thing, Double Indemnity, with uh, Fred McMurray, Edward G. Robinson, so... If you ain't seen it, see it. Uh, James Cagney. I mentioned him earlier as, uh, you know, and again, if we had more time, he wouldn't be honorable mention. He would be a real birthday. So he joined us uh, July 17th, 1999, and left us uh, in uh, 1986. Uh, actor of 25 films, won one Academy Award for Best Actor in Yankee Doodle Dandy, where he actually did singing and dancing and uh, earl stanley garner boy he looks mean here this is meaner than uh, perry mason ever looked as far as i can tell and uh, american lawyer a uh, lawyer born um, in uh, 1889 left us in 1970 best known of course for the perry mason series that he did uh that he wrote and uh, he came from uh, Ventura, California, where there's a plaque on his, uh, the building where he had his office. And uh, Michael Flatley was born July 16th, 1958. Uh, <laughs> no, this one first. He did uh, Lord of the Dance, which we went to see in person. I thought he was an egotistical whatsoever. And I still think of that as he takes his shirt off in front of tens of thousands of people. Anyway, so be it. So Michael is an Irish-American dancer, choreography, and musician. He became internationally known for Irish dance shows, River Dance, Lord of the Dance, and Feet of Flames. Sometimes I wish he would go up in flames, but anyway... His shows have played in more than 60 countries. He's credited with reinventing traditional Irish dance by incorporating new rhythms. And he is in the world Guinness World Records for tap dancing 35 times per second and all of that good stuff. So uh, we've gone with Nassanelli. We're going to skip a few other things that happened on this day, but we can catch up on those next week. I'm going to uh, leave now and make room for our special guests so please stay with us and in the meantime remember Kaplan will be here in front of the same same cigar store next week take care of yourself really really I mean that and thank you so much for being with us bye bye
Hello and uh, welcome to this brief webinar on uh, reverse mortgage facts and a few things like that. So uh, very glad that you're here. Happy to see you. And uh, let's get started. And this, like I said, won't take very long at all. And you'll have a lot of chance to come and go from it in the future and ask questions. So isn't it time to learn how a reverse mortgage can work for someone like yourself or for me or for anyone? And yes, I already have one. So I'm not just talking or trying to sell. I, I believe in it to the fact that my family has one. And in the past, let's just get into some myths versus what the truth is today. And in the past, there were many unregulated reverse mortgages. Many banks had their own version. Many were not good. So every bank on every corner had its own version. And in the 1980s, the government and FHA took over under President Reagan's direction. So if you've heard something bad about a reverse mortgage, it could very well be true because it was one of those. Reverse mortgages are fully regulated by Federal Housing Authority or the FHA. So reverse mortgages are the safest loan available. Why? Because you remain the only owner of your home. The bank does not take any ownership or equity position. It's only a loan. It's just a loan like any other loan. Only you decide when to make payments and when not to. And that's something, of course, you don't have that privilege with a regular loan. You are actually partnered with the bank because this is how it works. Your current loan, or at least we'll get into it a little bit here. Your current loan is paid off by the Heckam Bank or the new loan or reverse mortgage that you get. It is replaced now with a reverse mortgage. Now, you still own the same amount on your home, but the choice of making payments is yours. If you did not, not make a payment, the low interest, and I do mean low, is added to the loan balance. Appreciation usually outpaces the interest that is added to your, so that your equity can continue to grow even with no payments. And in California, where most of us here are at, the uh, amount of uh, appreciation goes, runs way ahead of any amount that you are adding to your loan amount. So remember, your house is this much, the loan amount is this much. So the amount that's gaining is on an amount that started here for what you may owe. And the amount that uh, your equity is growing is based on this larger number or your home itself. So uh, your Heckam loan, like I said, is paid off. You still owe the same amount on your home, but the choice is yours. If you did not make the payment and appreciation, as you know, just keeps rolling along and increasing. So here's some more benefits. With enough equity in your home, which most people have at our age, you'll receive a no cost line of credit. No funds are moved or removed from your equity, anything like that. The bank simply promises you access to this line of credit whenever you want for whatever reason you want. The biggest reasons, healthcare in my mind, or uh, increasing your legacy, increasing the value of your uh, portfolio or, or your financial position. In other words, this really should be a, sta a strategy in everyone's financial plan. This line of credit grows and is not connected to the value of your home. It's connected to interest rates as they change. So if you are accruing X percentage on what you owe, that same X percent percentage is the same value by which your line of credit is actually growing. So you kind of make up for one without the other. This, therefore, serves as a hedge against rising rates or inflation, which we may be seeing. We don't have a lot now, but we're starting to see some uh, effects of that. And lowering property values. Again, I don't see that for a long time. 
and just as an aside from this webinar, I know something horrible happened in 08. We'll get to that again before this is over, but I don't see that happening again. The reasons that property values are going up the way they are now is caused by a lot of different things different than what happened in 08. So I really expect this to continue. It's not a boom because booms are usually referred to as a boom and bust. I don't see the bust coming. Uh, but any payments you do make increases penny for penny the line of credit. You're always able to take it out. So let me go over that a little bit more. Uh, every penny, as you know, when you make a house payment, those pennies are divided. The interest is interest. The principal goes to pay down your balance. Same thing here. The principal will go to paying down the balance. However, every penny principal or interest actually goes to increasing the line of credit. So you can take X amount out of your line of credit. Next month you decided, hey, you know what? I want to put it back, put it back. You make a few payments on your home. You said, hey, you know what? I got a better reason. I'd rather not have made those payments. You take it back out. You put it back in whenever you want. In other words, it's just like the loan you have now, if you have one. But I'm sure you're all familiar with one, with one, with what one looks like. Um, it just gives you those more choices that you don't have in a regular loan. So let me give you a couple of uh, examples of how people can live better and create memories. Mr. and Mrs. Jones still needed to work part time to make payments for a motor home and other expenses. Uh, they had money in the bank, but they wanted to keep it right there in the bank. With a reverse mortgage, they paid off the motor home and had quality time to use it. When they pass, their children get the house and the money in the bank, retirement funds, everything else, and yes, a motor home, which is probably, which is, you know, completely paid for. Now, what else can you do? You can increase your legacy, and a legacy is important for those of us that have children and worry about such things. Uh, JW in San Diego with a free and clear home valued at two million dollars took out a reverse mortgage in the amount of you know just a little two hundred forty thousand. He did this to create a publishing business with his son. If he passed away the next day, he would have left his son one point seven six million instead of the two million. He would be happy with that. And by taking out the reverse mortgage, he freed up cash and greatly enhanced his legacy. He also created a line of credit for future protection in case health needs or anything else. But in the meantime, uh, he has a business with his son that he did not have before that. So I'm just showing you this screen because there are myth testimonials and they're going to take up time. I do not want to show them now but you will have access to all of those as time goes on or anytime you want you can come back or i can send them to you so i just don't want to take up extra time now because i promised it would be or this webinar would be on the uh, slightly shorter side so use a line of credit withdrawals if you have a down year for your portfolio so this is for those people that have portfolios that have investments uh, the American College of Finance and Fidelity Investments each did a study by themselves proving that a controlled Heckam Home Equity Conversion Mortgage or reverse withdrawal results in a more successful sequence of returns and a much higher legacy. Sequence of returns means what's actually, you know, the sequence of the returns on your retirement dollars. Those retirement dollars, each of those dollars, I figure, are little employees because when you are retired, your business is your retirement. So you don't want to take a chance with those and you don't want to lose too many of them in the earlier years of retirement because that will have a huge effect on the later years of your retirement. So here's some other ways people are using their reverse mortgage to improve their lives. Uh, JG was struggling with his deep sea fishing business because of the large payments on his vessel. He paid it off with a reverse mortgage and found his profit. Not too big a surprise, is it? Uh, 
Now, let me also say that, you know, if you're going to buy the boat, if you're going to buy the, uh, um, you know, the, I showed an Airstream tra trailer, but you know what I mean, recreational vehicle, you can still, it makes a whole lot more sense to pay for it in cash with money from the reverse mortgage and then make payments back to your reverse mortgage. Interest rate be a lot less and you'll be gaining back and all of those benefits that you may think you borrowed against. So DM was living in a large home by himself. He sold and moved to a fourplex using a reverse mortgage and was able to live with zero payments while collecting rent on the other units. Uh, not a bad idea, but uh, I'm going to recommend you use a property manager. I sure don't want my three or two or one neighbor knowing I own that property, nor do I want them calling me at three o'clock in the morning because something's broken down. So with a reverse mortgage to buy this, uh, you know, also you can buy other properties with a reverse mortgage and use them as rentals. The other thing you can do is you can use them as your retirement home. Buy them now before the rates go up that much more. And, uh, and if values go up, which we know are going up, I don't see rates really going up a great deal for a while. But if, you know, the values definitely are going up, buy that retirement home now. Rent it out in the meantime or whatever or use it or whatever. But stick it aside. Get it at today's rate. And uh, you should probably, or of course we'll talk about it, and we can talk about it at the beginning, middle, or near the time of total retirement. Um, there should be equity left over for you to do what you want to do and sell the home. And of course, just as an aside here, um, what, when you do sell a home, all the equity is yours. We're going to get into a little bit more of that in just a few minutes here. So what else can you do with a reverse mortgage? You can help a family member with a down payment on a home or children, grandchildren. Uh, help children or grandchildren with educational costs. Uh, go on a vacation now when you can all enjoy it. Create your memories now. Have living memories rather than after you're gone memories. Upgrade your home for aging. Yeah, you can do that. You can put a handle on your uh, front door steps. You can uh, should easily be able to add like a stair lift if you have a two story. You know, I always wanted one of those stair lifts. The problem is I live in a single story, but that's another another story. <clears throat> so you want to upgrade your home for aging. And one of the reasons you want to do that is you want to age in place. Now, sometimes you want to right size to a smaller or a place closer to the kids or whatever. But regardless of whether it's this place or that place, aging in place has been proven that you're going to probably live longer and probably live happier. So that, again, has to do with the growing line of credit and um, the uh, ability to use that line of credit for any health care or to be able to stay in place or let's face it, to pay for, I keep calling some of it health care. It's not really officially health care, but in-home care by, you know, a lot of companies do that. And you want to get to know some of those uh, in advance because who knows what's going to happen, even if you want to use them for a short period of time. But, you know, Medicare doesn't pay for those kind of things. So a reverse mortgage does. So the following items apply to all Heckam borrowers. Again, I, I don't mean to be interspering. It sounds like Heckam sounds like I've got a stomach problem, but home equity conversion mortgage is the real name for this program. It converts your equity into liquid equity. It doesn't mean you're spending it. It means you now have the ability to touch it, to use it when you want to. All members or all borrowers in the household must be 60 years old or older. Now there is what's called a non-borrowing spouse and you can definitely do it if your wife or your husband is under 60. We can talk about that, I don't wanna use up time here, but it's definitely still there. All borrowers must be US citizens or legal residents. 
at least one borrower must live in the property as is or her primary residence. The property must be owner occupied, but it doesn't keep you from buying a rental property. So now there's no police that come around to make sure you're still living in it. They're going to send you a letter once a year and you or somebody else is going to send it back. You're certainly permitted to take trips around the world. Uh, you're permitted, of course, to go into a nursing home for, you know, if it's going to be temporary, that's fine. If it's going to be a year or less, that's very easy. Only when the last person is gone, passes away, earns their wings, whatever you want to call it, uh, will there be a need to address the outstanding balance. Uh, all borrowers must receive counseling. The reverse mortgage professional providers provides a list of counseling agencies to the borrower. So you get to talk to a, a third person, somebody who is not particularly involved in your situation, just wants to make sure that you understand it and that the loan officer did a good job, okay? The maximum claim amount is right now has just gone up to eight, 822375 now, that does not at all mean that you're going to get that amount, nor does it mean that that's the maximum that you get. It just means that's the number that goes into the formula to figure out what you need. And on the jumbo loans, which are great, those go up to $4 million, although I've heard loan amounts, not the purchase, not the, the value of the loan of, of the property, like we were talking about before, but loan amounts I've heard of as high as six million. So you need a quick six million, go ahead. Um, in fact, I know a one uh, down by the Ritz Carlton down here uh, in Southern California, property $25 million, free and clear, took out 4 million so that each of his children could have a $2 million home free and clear. And uh, I did, and I wasn't lucky enough to be the one that did that loan, but I did try to present myself as his third child, but the guy decided I looked more like his father than his children. But anyway, uh, here are some uh, advantages between a Heckam and a regular loan. So let's say, you know, let's divide the room up into two. You've got plan A over there. You've got plan B over there. Uh, plan A people must make a payment every single month. You get a letter if you don't. You get nastier and nastier letters and late payments added on if you don't make the payment. Foreclosure, if payments and extra fees are not paid up and you could lose your home. And when you do that, all the money you've uh, put into it can go in there. So. I know most people, a lot of people say, I don't need this, I don't need that. But you never know when that, quote, black swan is going to float around the corner. You never know when there's going to be a surprise health situation, family emergency. You just never, ever know. Plan B, that's the group over there. They make payments on their loan when they think it best for them to do that. When they don't, they don't make that payment. No letters if you're late, no foreclosures, no chance of losing those, and no loss to you and your heirs, no future responsibility to it. It's a non-recourse loan, so nobody will ever be responsible should there be any kind of a problem. Should you pass away with no children, it's, you know, to, to give it to whatever, nobody, the estate, nothing has to pay up. And we're going to get into a little bit more of that pretty quickly, too. And uh, when I say no loss, you still have to make your taxes and insurance payments on your home. So that is a must, but that's a must anyway, isn't it? Now, financial implications of a home equity conversion mortgage. I just said that. Property taxes and insurance are still the homeowner's responsibility. Uh, Medicare and Medicaid or Medi-Cal in the case of California, are still very possible with a reverse or heck of Medicare, nothing, has nothing, really nothing, and neither is Social Security. No effect whatsoever. Um, Medicaid is a little different situation, but I've done many uh, reverse mortgages that have those as part of them, and you just need to uh, be able to be working with someone who can uh, put it together uh, the way that uh, 
Medicaid wants it. And it, it's not like you're trying to fool them. It's just that you're following their rules and we do so. But because the uh, HECM or reverse proceeds are not considered income, there's never any taxes, income taxes on the proceeds that you get. So uh, do you qualify for a home equity conversion mortgage? Well, all borrowers must be 60 or older. And I said that uh, if there's a household member that's not 60, that's also very possible. Minimum income and credit re requirements. And I do mean they're in their minimum. After all, there's no house payment that's required. So no house payment is figured in your obligations. No FICO scores are looked at. So there's no FICO scores in this loan at all. The proceeds from a reverse mortgage may be considered uh, may be considered to be income. Uh, and I wrote that and uh, not sure. The reverse mortgage income is not taxable. Can it be considered income? Oh, I see. Sorry about that. I like to not rehearse these things too much to be a little more spontaneous. What I mean by that, and that's not a good sentence. What I mean by that is that uh, income towards qualifying. So if you get, say, $200,000 in your line of credit or cash or combination, that number, whatever it is, divided by the number of months that you are, quote, supposed to live, is considered income towards qualifying. So thank you for reminding me. I need to change that sentence. El eligible non-borrowing spouses receive protection from losing the home should the borrower predecease them. We factor his or her age into the calculations, but if you are younger than 60, if you were not put on the loan to begin with, you are not going to lose the home if your spouse goes before you. And then, of course, we could usually do a new one with you on it if you're 60 or older or 62 in most cases. Age of the borrower, the youngest borrower, interest rates and home value determine the amount of the benefit. So the older you are, the more benefit you get. Now, don't, mean, don't take that to mean you wait until you get that larger benefit. Because if you take it younger, especially on your reverse mortgage birthday, which is when you turn 60, uh, the line of credit will have a lot longer to grow. So by the time you turn 75, yes, you would have gotten more benefit as doing the loan at 75. But overall, the benefit is now larger if you got it back at 62 and now it's 75. So the sooner you get it, the more time you have for that line of credit to grow and the benefit is the best. Uh, so borrowers own the property and as such are responsible for paying property taxes and homeowners insurance as well as general upkeep of the property. Don't ask me how they find out about the upkeep. They don't, but you no, know, you want to keep your your home in living condition no matter what anyway. A limited financial analysis of each HECM borrower is a condition of HECM approval and has improved the security for all FHA loans and borrowers. HECM borrowers verify and document just the following, uh, sometimes referred to as the newer and safer HECM, and that's just, you know, credit history, no FICO scores, looking especially at how you did your house payment taxes insurance for the last two years. Uh, emphasis on that, on those, and income is satisfied in almost every single case only by Social Security, and again, no FICO scores. Now, let's get into the repayment period of time. The loan is scheduled to be repaid when the last borrower or non-borrowing spouse no longer lives in the home as their primary residence. The borrower can be gone for extended periods for health or vacation. I think we mentioned that. The loan can also be repaid in cash from any source, such as other assets, proceeds from life insurance policy, or a loan refinance. So sometimes, you know, you'll have life insurance or buy extra life insurance if you can qualify with proceeds from the reverse and uh, give your uh, 
your heirs that much more insurance to pay off the house and to enjoy their life with. So no matter what happens, no debt is passed along to the heirs and there's no personal liability. Uh, I can hardly think of any other loan that gives you all of those benefits. Once the loan is repaid, any remaining equity belongs to the homeowner or their heirs. And I think we explained, and I'll just touch upon again, that no matter how long you're in the property, uh, the value of the property is going to increase and the amount of the loan could increase, doesn't have to, but if you don't make, ha if you don't make payments, the balance will increase, but the value of the home in almost every situation is going to greatly outrun whatever that is. So unlike the payoff of a normal loan, your heirs are given up to one full year to pay off the loan or sell the property. Again, a regular Wells Fargo Bank of America, they're going to want it right away. If the property is upside down or underwater, and I just can't see how that's going to happen. Yes, it happened in 08, 09, but then it certainly righted itself and look at things now. But anyway, if anything like that happens, like let's say you live to 240 and you've taken out all kinds of money, and nothing is owed by the heirs. Should the heirs want to keep the property thinking that values are coming back, they can purchase that, pay it off at 95% of the current value, not the loan balance. So just for round numbers, if the home is worth 400 and the and the loan is worth 600, they do not pay off the 600, they pay off 95% of the 400. What other loan will allow you to do that? None. And if they don't want the property, they walk away and nobody has any problem whatsoever, not with credit, not with anything. Remember that when used properly, the reverse or HECM can be used to increase your legacy to your heirs. So, you know, I look at it a way of strengthening not only your financial situation, but your legacy and your own protections. You can always, you know, in a summary, you can always make payments on a reverse mortgage like any other loan. You can put it in forward gear to make payments. And this is only when you want to. Uh, you can put it in neutral, making interest only payments so that your loan balance never changes, but your payment has now come way, way down. And of course, at the same time, your equity will highly increase. Uh, you can put it in reverse, and I don't need to say too much more about that. A HECM is simply an add-on to a normal mortgage that you are used to. If you have no mortgage right now, it can work even better by giving you more of a line of credit. It is uh, not a huge change and gives you choices. It differs only in that there are more protections and security than other loans. So don't miss out on this opportunity. And did you know that other countries also offer reverse mortgages? I've got just a few things here. Uh, sometimes you can't even keep up with the, the banks and the banking systems can't even keep up with it. So you can read some of these things here. Canada is going gangbusters. Australia uh, is uh, making sure all their people know about this when they turn their age in most of these countries it is younger than it is here but that's not within our scope so thank you very very much and uh, I want to remind you that uh, I'm here for any and all questions 866-955-2233 uh, 866-955-2233 my email is bestloantoday at gmail.com, bestloantoday at gmail.com. And if you do call or, uh, what, you know, you've given your information anyway to be here. I'm not going to abuse that information. I'm not going to keep calling and calling and this kind of thing. I do not do that. I want to make sure that you are educated and have the choices at hand that you need for a, uh, a great retirement. So this is Jay. Uh, I'll be signing off for now, but I'm really looking forward to your comments and questions. Take care of yourself, okay? And uh, be sure to come back to this webinar whenever you like and to uh, ask as many questions as you like. That is what I live for. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.